So as the NVIDIA 3000 series GPUs were announced, there's also been a flurry of questions concerning sort of compatibility with current hardware, PCIe generation three, four CPUs. Recently, NVIDIA on Reddit did a AMA ask me anything, basically questions about the upcoming 3000 series. People wanted to know if they're gonna be bottlenecked by their CPU, maybe PCIe generation three, four. What's the actual performance gonna be like? What are gonna be some of the differences? So let's talk about some of these. Some are quite surprising. Some answer a lot of very important questions. Let's get into it and let's see what they said. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. To all my new subscribers, thank you for joining us. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. Leave a comment below. Hit that thumbs up button. Really helps us out. All right, let's get right into it. NVIDIA recently answered a lot of questions that we had on Reddit. Some of you guys may actually have missed that. So we're going to go over some of the most important points in our conversation today. That way, you're going to be better informed about the new NVIDIA 3000 series GPUs. One of the bigger questions asked is a little bit older CPU going to bottleneck these GPUs. So now Nvidia actually answered that yes, an older CPU, a slightly less performant CPU, will potentially bottleneck these GPUs that are extremely powerful, including the 3070. So basically their recommendation was to get the best performing CPU that you can get your hands on. So even something that used to be great for gaming, like a 8700K, 9700K, those are still absolutely fantastic for gaming, don't get me wrong. But if the question comes down to, is it going to bottleneck a little bit when you're playing games? It's definitely not going to be terrible or anything like that. But you may get better performance from like a current generation CPU, like something from AMD or specifically for gaming like Intel, like a 10900K. Those are going to have insane clock speeds and generally have less of a chance of bottlenecking your GPU. So to answer the question, yes, if you have an older CPU, potentially you're going to be bottlenecking the performance of your 3000 series GPU. But having said that, it doesn't mean you can't use your current CPU. It doesn't mean that it's not going to work at all. It's just going to be a, maybe a little bit less performance. You're going to get a little bit less frames per second. But on the other hand, you're also not paying top dollar for the current generation CPU, and you're using something that you've likely had for a few years. So that pretty much answers that question. I wouldn't worry about it too much. As long as you have a decent, fairly modern CPU, I think you should be fine. But if you do want to upgrade to something newer and faster, you'll definitely reduce the a chance of bottlenecking these very powerful GPUs. The second most important question was PCIe generation 3 versus 4. As you guys know, the current AMD motherboards and X570 already have PCIe generation 4. Intel doesn't, but it's probably coming with Rocket Lake, their 11th generation. Basically, they asked NVIDIA, is this going to be a big deal? NVIDIA said no. Generation 4, while in some cases it can provide a little bit of a performance bump, like a 1-2%, to 2 in general, PCIe Generation 3 is going to be more than fine and it really shouldn't bottleneck most performance aside from that very minor difference. They even mentioned that something like a gaming CPU that's highly optimized for gaming will more than make up that difference. I think they were probably hinting at something like an Intel 10700K or 10900K as opposed to having PCIe Generation 4 but a lower clocked CPU. But that pretty much answers the question. I wouldn't really worry about it. If your current motherboard is only PCIe Generation 3, as most people's are, I wouldn't worry about it. Perhaps way into the future, and um, when it's time for you to upgrade, I would get something with PCIe Generation 4. Or if you're planning to upgrade, might as well get something that's gonna support it anyway. But for now, if you only have Generation 3, according to Nvidia, the engineer that sort of responded to these questions, you're really not gonna have that much of a bottleneck or any really serious issues. Of course, there may be minute differences depending on hardware, depending on games, but in general, you'll be fine with PCIe Generation 3. Don't worry, it's not something you need to stress about. If you're going to throw that 3070 onto an existing system, even a, a Generation 3, you'll be more than fine, and don't worry about any lost performance, as that's going to be very, very negligible. Another area that they touched on is sort of the price difference and performance difference between the 3070 and the 3080. Now, when they said the 3070 is going to have better performance than a 2080 Ti, as we've talked about before, on the channel that definitely got people going nuts because literally that's a $500 GPU that's performing better than last generation's $1,100 or $1,200 GPU. So that's definitely pretty significant. 
And then the question is, there's a $200 price difference between the 3070 and the 3080. Is it justified? Is it worth it? Well, once again, they said 3070 faster than a 2080 Ti, and the 3080 is around twice the performance of the previous generation 2080. Now, that's definitely pretty significant, um, and I think for a $200 price difference, that really doesn't sound too bad, actually. It sounds like the 3080 is an absolute monster of a GPU. The 3070 as well, it starts off very, very high, very high performing. And then as we get to the 3080, for a $200 difference for something you may be keeping for two, three, four, or five years, to get a lot better performance, it may actually be worth it. The 3080 this generation may be sort of that high performance sweet spot, even though it's not a cheap GPU by any means. 499 for the 3070, definitely the mainstream sweet spot, but sort of the high end sweet spot, I would say it's definitely that 3080, because the difference between the 3080 and the 3090 is really, really significant. I mean, it's around like a six, $700 difference, which is really significant. Even if the 3090 is performing a lot better than the 3080, most games and resolutions, you're not going to take advantage of it nearly as much. I mean, you can buy almost two 3080s for the price of one 3090. So that's why I think on the high end, the 3080 presents itself as an incredible value. And I think more or less Nvidia tried to get that point across as well. Nvidia was also asked about some of these performance differences on the 30 series compared to the 20 series. Their answer, pretty much there was a huge breakthrough in the actual GPU technology, including the architecture and the memory, various, various various technological updates made it possible to be such a significant gap in really performance where like a 3070 is performing better than a 2080 Ti. Usually it's not that drastic. Usually you would expect maybe the 3080 to perform better than a 2080 Ti, but in this case they really really stretched it out and according to them even the 3080 is going to be able to do 4k 144 hertz maxed out on many games like Doom Eternal as well as a couple other games that they mentioned. So that's really really significant. And that means the 3070, while it may not max out at 4K, you'll be able to get respectable 4K performance, uh, you know, compared to before. So that's extremely exciting, and that kind of explains why there's such a big gap in performance between the 30 series and the 20 series. Technology definitely moved a little faster this time, and that's going to be great for us. Of course, they also asked about the RTX 3090. Definitely piqued people's interest. Now, basically, Nvidia said this is like a Titan-level GPU. They don't go so far as to call it an actual Titan GPU, which is pretty interesting. That leads me to believe that over the $2,000 price mark, they may be holding on to a future Titan card. Um, I don't think there's been any rumors or anything like that of them completely abandoning the Titan name. So that's why I figure the 3090, they said Titan level performance. But I think we're still going to see a Titan later on, but they didn't really address this. So basically what they said is that... The 3080, they consider it basically their gaming flagship. Now, the 3090, even though, of course, it's much more performance than the 3080, it has more VRAM, it has more technology that's going to appeal to non-gamers. Anybody doing sort of, you know, science applications, content creation, maybe video editing, it's also going to be sort of branching into that market, traditionally the market that the Titan goes after. Just for pure gaming, 1440p, 4K gaming, I think the 3090 is going to be definitely overkill. It seems like the 3080 for now is sort of the flagship. And as we've talked about before, Nvidia didn't address this now, but there's a big price gap between the 3080 and 3090. I think possibly in the future that's going to be where maybe like a 3080 Ti or something, it slots right in the middle, would make perfect sense. There's enough room there price-wise as well as performance-wise to really bridge that gap. But that's something we're going to have to see later on. So for now, it's interesting to see that Nvidia considers it a Titan level card for the 3090. And it's not necessarily necessarily just for gamers even though the marketing and everything it's an RTX card so it's definitely sort of in that gamer you know universe but I think a lot of content creators are also going to take advantage of it. There were also some interesting questions on the cooling designs of these new GPUs. According to the engineer as long as in your case in your chassis you have cool air coming in towards the GPU and then somewhere an exhaust for the air to come out of the GPU you'll be more than fine. I mean this traditionally works with anything even the 20 series a lot 
lot of GPUs will work in this way, but just make sure whatever case design you're going to do, whatever build, make sure to keep some nice fans maybe pointed at your GPU and also have something at the top or out the back of your case where you can exhaust all that hot air. And I think in general, airflow should be pretty good. I'm very interested to see how these coolers perform and sound in terms of their, you know, audible sound levels, as well as their cooling performance. As you guys know on the channel, I do a lot of water-cooled GPUs. It would be interesting to see if one of these air-cooled GPUs gets close or at least closer to the level that a water-cooled GPU usually does. But anyway, we're still going to water-cool these 3000 series GPUs just because you're still going to get better performance and it looks pretty awesome. There were also a couple of other interesting subjects broached. For example, they spoke about the RTX IO as well as the direct storage system. Apparently, these GPUs are going to be fast and powerful enough in the system to be almost, you know, like it says, direct storage devices, allowing you to bypass a lot of the bottlenecks that you have now between, you know, your GPU and your system, as well as your, your solid state drives or whatever drives you may have in your system. That's something that's not available now. There's not too much information on it. They didn't answer too much about it. We're going to have to wait in the future, but what that's going to mean for us is a lot faster I.O., a lot faster interfaces and connections between your GPUs and your, and your solid state drives. So that just means a faster, smoother gaming performance. Maybe stuff will load instantaneously or a lot faster. So that's definitely pretty exciting, but I think that's still off in the horizon. Not too much is going to be available early on, and there's not too much information on that. So anyway, I'll link this down below so you can see the conversation for yourself. Very interesting how nice and transparent and friendly NVIDIA is really being, you know, allowing their engineers to talk with people, answer these questions. Maybe it signals a different path that they're taking. They're being more involved with the consumer. Um, that's definitely great. I think it's a step in the right direction having these very powerful GPUs for, you know, roughly fair prices. I think everybody would agree that the pricing seems pretty good this generation for the performance that you're getting. So hopefully they keep it up um, and they don't drop the ball like they did with the 20 series GPUs because after all these GPUs are very important in terms of how we experience our gaming our content creation um, they're one of the vital links to better performance all right guys so I hope you enjoyed this video remember to subscribe leave a comment below and I'll see you guys on the next video